guys. Today we're going to go over my um, Blade Vortex character I've been playing the past couple weeks. Um, I've been farming the 80% Delirious uh, Strong Boxes um, with this character. Um, I've done about 250-ish maps. Um, when I finish all these, it'll be about 300 maps. Um, and Let's see, I found about two Apothecaries and probably created about two Mirror Shards, I think, from all the cards that I found. Um, and uh, I guess the nice thing is, uh, we're playing Blade Vortex, we're able to do 80% Delirious, uh, we are able to take any Altar mod that pops up. Um, and we've got Great Clear, we're able to fit in, you know, a tiny bit of quantity, only running 30%. But... Um, definitely gets the job done and is very fun to play okay so a little bit about the game mechanics or the build mechanics and uh so we are a blade vortex build but at the same time we are not really a blade vortex build what i mean by that is um blade vortex is only there to um kill one mob and make it die and that and explode and that explosion you know will kind of chain to another mob and kill another mob and then that mob will die and explode and then you know and so on and so forth until like the whole screen just like blows up as soon as you just kill one mob so the whole point of our blade vortex is just to actually just kill one mob right and then let the explosions do the rest so we are not really a blade vortex build we are actually an explosion build like this is our our main skill here the uh, physical explosion is um without a doubt the best explosion in the game because you can convert it to different damage types uh mainly cold and in this case we're scaling the physical damage uh part of the explosion with our uh herald of ash and then all that damage gets converted into cold and then gets scaled by our uh, Herald of Ice. Um, or I guess, yeah, a little bit by that. And then our Hatred Aura. So um, we are um, kind of double dipping on the explosion. That's why phys physical explosions are always going to be the best type of explosions. It's because you can scale them two times instead of... Uh, just once, like for example, with the Herald of Ash or Herald of Ice, you can only just scale the uh, the fire damage or the cold damage, right? And we have four different explosions in the build. We have our chest explosion, we have the Herald of Ash, we have the Herald of Ice, and then we also have uh, the Profane Bloom. So um, with this amount of explosions, uh, pretty much as soon as you kill one mob, everything around it will just die, you know? instantly uh and it feels really good looks really good and is really good to play and you might be wondering like why am i not using the you know new explosion flask and honestly uh, i did try the flask and it, it's terrible i really don't like it i mean like i said physical explosions these are what you want you don't want you know some random explosion it, it didn't really i didn't really notice the flask is on honestly and that's why i'm running a more defensive flask setup um so uh, just wanted to quickly explain that about the build because, you know, yeah, it, it's not really, we're, we're not really a Blade Vortex build, we are a physical explosion, uh, and, like, you know, explosion build, right? Okay, so, um, let's go over the gear and gems and passive tree. And there's a lot of ways you can build Blade Vortex, I think. Um, this time I decided to go with the synthesized bow and quiver. Um, it is a, quite a bit more damage than the two void batteries. But um, I think you could probably build it any way you want. You can do the void batteries and you can do a wand and squire setup. Or you can run with the bow. Uh, nice thing about the... Uh, wand shield combo is you can shield charge but I think that is probably the most expensive way of building it and uh, probably the most DPS uh, bow and quiver is sort of like the middle ground I think that I bought this base for about uh, 30 something divines and um, it took about 
tend to find just so to make this craft. The craft is very easy. Uh, and there's plenty of guides for uh, how to make it on uh, YouTube and such. Uh, and the quiver too. I This is uh, Asphyxia's Wrath. And you basically just want to buy these and corrupt them yourself until you get the 11% physical damage as extra cold. Uh, it took me about six tries, so... Um, Let's just see. I think if you bought this normally, it is a couple of divines. There's only three right now. For a 11%, it's about five divines. So you, you should definitely just buy these at like one chaos and you just corrupt them. All right. And for the helmet, uh, we're using just a kind of standard blade vortex gear. I kind of um, cheaped out on <laughs> the gear pieces. Other than the, the uh, uniques, I think, because I didn't really need uh, the stats. Um, I mainly was looking for a lot of life and, of course, the power charge. And uh, nearby enemies have minus 9 cold resistance. And for the amulet, I'm using my uh, armor stacker amulet here. So that was kind of nice. I didn't have to buy this. Uh, chest is we basically just want the explode mod an elevated explode and elevated uh, non curse auras. I believe they're both elevated, right? Uh, yes. Um, and you want the explode and aura effect to be as high of a roll as possible, especially the explode mod. Uh, for the, for the rings, I'm using a curse on hit uh, with frostbite. And I just uh, rolled this with Essences. And I'm using Aventors, uh, just 10%. It's kind of uh, not really all that great, but um, gets the job done. Uh, I am using the uh, Mage Blood for my Armor Stacker too. I did try Headhunter, but um, Headhunter with these boots that only have like 10% movement speed uh, felt really bad when flasks were down. And then I also lost a lot of resists and armor, and uh, overall I think the Mage Blood uh, combo with the permanent onslaught and Quicksilver Flask is very nice. You can see we're still very fast, even though we have these 10% uh, movement speed boots. Um, oh, and I guess yeah. So the boots are the Gold Worm. Uh, a little bit of magic find, uh, just these two pieces here. Um, this is where I could kind of sacrifice the uh, item slot for magic find. So. I think in total we are at uh, 30% increased quantity, which is not all that much, but it uh, definitely adds extra loot to every map we're doing. Uh, our gloves, uh, these are pretty basic gloves. Uh, it doesn't have the um, extra damage against chilled enemies, but this has... Uh, I think all of these are tier one, like triple tier one resistances. Uh, and it has the physical damage converted to cold. So I, I bought these. And um, for the implicits, you can you notice we're not using the conversion implicit. And that's because I have this uh, relic that converts 30% of my physical to cold. And I anointed uh, unwavering stance on this because I really don't like being stunned. And I think every time I build like an occultist or some build on this top of the tree, part of the tree, I'm just like always getting stunned and it just feels really bad. So um, I just picked up Unwavering Stance and so we cannot be stunned. Uh, okay, so that is all the gear. Quickly go over the flasks. Uh, we're using a uh, silver flask with the reduced mana cost of skills. This uh, brings our Blade Vortex down to about 2 mana. Uh, just enough to be able to trigger our Inspiration, but um, allows us to reserve a lot of Auras. Uh, you can see we only have 22 mana. And uh, we're still able to cast all our spells, um, you know, trigger our cast and damage taken, and stuff like that. Uh, we've got a Granite Flask with uh, the 40% additional Elemental Resistances to uh, give us a lot of armor and uh, overcap our resistances. Um, I want to be able to take, you know, any mod, any altar mod that pops up. So 
a lot of times I'll be taking like, you know, two altar mods that reduce my cold and lightning resist. And on top of that, having a curse or something on you uh, will take you pretty, you know, below 75. So and it, um, I just went out of my way to get a lot of cold and lightning resistance. Uh, and then I've added a gold flask, I guess, right? Might as well, right? Uh, if I wasn't running the gold flask, I would probably uh, use the dim a diamond flask with uh, increased armor. Uh, but I didn't really need the damage, and I'm able to clear the content I want to do without the um, uh, diamond flask. So uh, I'm just running this gold flask. And for our uh, movement flask, I have a quicksilver with the chance of wood being ignited on it. Uh, when you're opening strong boxes and stuff, there's a lot of times there's, you know, ignite and ignites you when you open it and it's just really annoying. So I just got ignite immunity with a flask here. Okay, so last flask, uh, we're using progenesis and this is kind of the last sort of like like the savior for blade vortex you know in a way in delirious maps where there's a lot of things that will would otherwise one shot you uh it does not one shot you anymore and you're able to sort of like do content that probably wouldn't be able to do otherwise um because you just die from random one shots but with this flask we're able to take those hits uh most of the time you know and still um, complete the maps. Okay, so if I wasn't running these two magic find pieces, you, you probably just want some uh, uh, regular like Tailwind Elusive Boots uh, and a... Uh, what are those called? The I think I have one in my stash. Let's go check real quick. Uh, so it is the circle of guilt with the and you want the herald of purity increased buff effect and increased physical damage while affected by her herald of purity so not this one but uh, you would want to run one of these and that will give you quite a lot of damage okay so that is it for the gear and not before. now let's go look at the talent tree or the passive tree and it's kind of like your standard blade vortex tree and uh we'll start on i guess this side uh, i'm running two inspired learnings um just one wasn't really feeling that good and i don't even know if these are actually doing that much but it it definitely makes mapping a lot more fun i think um I think most people will probably just run one here and you run a um, unnatural instinct in this slot here but um I find like when you're when you're jumping into these like harbinger like king harbinger mobs like in the 80% delirious maps having two inspired learnings helps you uh, clear them a lot safer okay um, the talent tree will kind of be will be in the description, but we'll just kind of go over some of the jewels and uh, gems we're using. So for our large clusters, uh, we're running one force multiplier, iron breaker, master of the fundamentals, uh, physical damage cluster, uh, and this will just give us a lot of extra physical damage. Uh, to scale our physical uh, explosions from our explodey chest. And we're running two um, Towering Threat, Vast Power, uh, Medium Clusters, and we have the Forbidden Flame with the Heart of Destruction, so we get the uh, increased damage when we hit um, a unique enemy and uh, increased AoE when we uh you know don't have convergence you can see our aoe i don't know if you can really see it that good but we got some really um nice aoe going on um definitely feels really good especially with all the explosions having you want to get as much uh area effect as possible i think 
And okay, for the second cluster, this is a cold cluster. Um, I think I bought this for like 12 divines or so, but the nodes that I wanted specifically was the uh, Doriani's lesson. So we get a little bit of leech um, and blast freeze because blast freeze is probably the best um, notable in, in the game, I think. Um, this kind of makes it so that if you, you even if you just freeze one little mob, everything around it gets frozen. So, um, if there's like some tanky mobs or bosses like Kosis and Omniphobia, uh, even if you can't actually freeze them because you're not doing enough damage, if you just hit, you know, a, a mob nearby and you freeze that mob, then they will also get frozen too, right? So really good defense and this is probably our biggest defense on the build is everything around us constantly being frozen and they are not able to do anything right and on top here i've got a blanketed snow note here this is uh really um really good damage so i'm just taking this and for our second set of medium clusters we're running a uh herald cluster with the purposeful harbinger and empowering envoy and purposeful uh <laughs> purposeful harbinger uh this just gives us uh our effect for each herald that we have active and we have three active right now so uh we are using two of these to get a lot of aura effect and the other node is just uh, increased uh herald skill damage so our herald of ash and herald of ice uh explosions will hit a lot harder and for uh, the small clusters, I'm running one three passive uh, mana reservation efficiency cluster with the uncompromising node, uh, just so I can fit all of my auras in very nicely. And lastly, we got a Watcher's Eye with the critical strike chance while affected by hatred, and uh, of course, uh, the reduce extra damage from critical strikes when while affected by determination. Uh, I really like this mod. This is. Um, this helps you survive a lot of these, um, how do you say, one shots will, um, a lot of hits that would otherwise one shot you will only, you know, take you to like half health or like, you know, do two thirds of your health, um, and will allow you to, you know, do content that is, uh, would otherwise be, uh, impossible to do because you just keep getting one shot, right? Okay, and so that's about it. Oh wait, so forgot about the timeless jewel. We're using uh, militant faith um, from the High Templar Dominus. Oh, you know what? I just realized that um, I didn't have this allocated this whole time. Okay, so I've been like mapping without this. <laughs> um, but actually, you kind of want this, right? So this is like quite a lot of damage. Um, so we're using Inner Conviction to uh, have more spell damage per power charge and we gain power charges of Frenzy Charges, right? So uh, very nice. And this jewel also has a 1% increased effect of Dawn Curse Auras per 10 Devotion and 1% reduced mana cost of skills per 10 Devotion. And I went out of my way to find one where none of these notables here are um actually like converted like because this timeless jewel actually convert some of these nodes you can see here this is usually like a mana node but instead it gives you you know one to minimum endurance charges and there's, there's a whole bunch of other ones you can take but i didn't want any of them converted so um yeah all right so that's it for the tree um let's go um look at the gems so we're running uh blade vortex over here you see it's level 30 blade vortex and we're running um anomalous inspiration in power uh power charge on crit uh awaken unleash and increase critical damage this is your standard blade vortex setup and then we have in the helmet just uh you know your standard uh vortex bone chill Kind of set up here and on our chest we are running a uh, six link aura set up here with hatred 
Enlightened Determination, Herald of Purity, Zealotry, and Herald of Ice. And with all of our aura effect, I think we are at about well, over like 200% aura effect. So we are getting double effect from all of our uh, auras, which uh, gives us quite a lot of armor, um, cold damage, physical damage, uh, and spell crit. All right, and so in the gloves, I'm running a cast on damage taken with uh, molten shell, increased duration, phase run. Uh, I think a lot of people will probably put vortex on left click, right? But I really don't like that. Um, I'm ready and not before. This makes everything kind of hard to see, and honestly, I don't really even need the damage, you know. Um, only really use like vortex if there's like a boss, basically, right? Um. So I, I, I use phase run because right now I don't have phasing in the build, right? And you want to be able to like run through mobs and it makes you actually go pretty fast, you know, when you have phase run up. So just like charge up your blade vortex and then just phase run around and it uh, feels well nice. Uh, in the boots, we're using uh, Herald of Ash, Divergent Herald of Ash for the uh, increased area of effect. I got a portal gem here, and arcane surge, and flame dash. Or actually, we have two arcane surge supports here because I'm not always using my um, vortex, so I just have another one on flame dash, so I can keep up my um, arcane surge. Okay. Oh, and I forgot we to go over the ascendancy. So uh, it's kind of typical blade vortex, I guess. Right, we get the forbidden power. Frigid Wake, Void Beacon, and I think a lot of people will probably take this note here for the extra curse, but um, like I said, we are we already are doing enough damage as it is, and um, having another explosion is, um, I think it's very nice to have, it sounds really good, looks really good, and it kind of helps just like pop the whole screen, you know, so uh, I went for the uh, explosion instead of the extra curse. All right, well, that's about it for um, the Blade Vortex character. Um, you can take a look at the POB if you want. And if I missed anything or, for, or if you have any questions, uh, leave a comment and I'll try to get back to you guys. Uh, anyways, thanks for watching and see you later.